let's talk about academic writing again. This is the second video. If you haven't seen the first one, go and have a quick look. Um, it's really important that you catch that one. These kind of run in a bit of an order. So go and have a look at academic writing one before you go into this. In that video, I set out why I'm talking about academic writing, my thoughts about it, and some broad ideas that, that can get you started. We'll go a little bit more into detail now. Um, let's get straight into it. So the first one, one of the main things that I'll talk about in the final video, um, the third video might not be the final, is to push away from complexity, to look for simplicity um, in the language we use and the analysis that we use. And this is related to the video that I'll post down below about a complex of ideas and how we understand that. But something to understand um, is that usually to find simplicity in your writing and in your analysis comes before, sorry, comes after complexity. So when you're writing about these ideas, especially if it's your first time of writing about them, often you'll find that the, the complexity of the ideas in your own head aren't that clear. When you try and write them down, they don't come down as clear. They don't come down on the paper as clear. So while we're going to strive for simplicity in our analysis and clarity, we also have to expect at times there's going to be complexity. So if you feel like your work is a little bit all over the place, that's not the end of the world. Just accept it and know that there's going to be a process whereby you polish it, you shape it, you edit it. So sometimes when we're looking for this sort of idea, you will find that you're writing and you may even have lost the control of your own writing. You've written some sentences and you come back to them. What was I thinking there? It's often not that you understood it at the time and now you don't. It's that you never understood it in the first place. That the words that you used just didn't make sense. There was too much complexity in there. So that's something to look out for. Accept it. If it feels a bit, a bit over complex and a little bit dense, that's fine. We're going to sort that out eventually. The next thing we're looking for, though, is meaningful coherence. Now, I mentioned this um, in the essay. Uh, sorry, in the first video. In relation to an essay which has a broad start point up here and then a conclusion which links back to the start point in some ways in some ways it's what we can one element of meaning meaningful coherence but a way to think about meaning, meaningful coherence is that the sections which you build together have a clear connection they are meaningful in that they are dealing with the issue at hand so you haven't got sections which are like, oh, oh, and there's this as well, you know, which is a, a, a sidebar or a side note. Now, you can make those sidebars if it feels like that, if it feels like, oh, actually, this is something that we could discuss at another time. And a lot of academic papers do do that. And they make it as a note, you know, this is something that is important, but I'm just not going to talk about it now. But you shouldn't have a full section. So I'm writing about this topic. And in my mind, it kind of connects to something else. And here it is but you haven't made it clear what that connection is and it doesn't really fit within your analysis. So look out for these. This is a problem that I see a lot of undergrads. Um, people are starting to grasp ideas and understand ideas and know that there's links and then have a bit of a scattergun approach. Oh, that, that, oh, that fits there. Oh, when Chris was lecturing, he said that idea and he connected it to that. And that might be fine in a lecture, which is thought provoking and trying to get you to think, but in an essay where it's, black and white, literally, <laughs> literature, um, that, that, that looseness, that lack of coherence is something to be careful of. So if you're writing an essay about a topic, make sure that that topic is what you're writing about. It seems like a very simple thing to say, but everything within it should be meaningful towards that topic and it should all come together in a coherent way. So one of the goals of a really good essay. And it's very hard to get a high mark in academic writing, um, in an academic writing assessment, without meaningful coherence. Okay. Now within that, that striving for meaningful coherence, one of the ways that we do that is through transitions. So I've talked about building blocks in the first video. And those building blocks will have connections between them. So given all that I've just argued here, it seems appropriate now to discuss the following issues. Firstly, I will tackle this. Now that is a transition. What, what I call a linguistic transition. I've just, I've just told the reader what I'm going to do. You know, just done this and now I'm going to this. So it's the same way that you would um, take somebody on a walk and you go, right, we're gonna walk to here and then we're gonna go to there. 
that is a, that is a transition it's plotting the path but a slightly better way of thinking about this is to have what i think about as a conceptual transition so that is where there's there's a, a an idea which you've developed and from that idea you pull out an element of that or you make a transition from that to a different concept but that they are linked in really important ways so this is now less about words i'm going to do this to this it's like it's now logical and reasoned this concept has the following connection to this concept therefore i'm, I'm going on to that now or this area has not been meaningfully discussed in the following area no literature is on this okay right so now i'm going to go on to that and that gives the person who's reading the piece not only a map way to follow a map to follow on the journey of your essay but also shows when you do the conceptual transitions that you understand this concept links to this concept. That's what we can call synthesis or it's an element of synthesis. That is where we give the, some of the highest marks for academic writing is the ability to bring ideas together across different empirical worlds in across different disciplines. That sort of synthesis is high order work. Um, where we can give a lot of marks so look for those transitions and those transitions also it's all feeds back and it all links together demonstrate somebody who can see the meaningful coherence between their work if you can't transition between this bit to that bit this building block to that building block and you can't do that how does the reader know that you know how does the reader understand that you can see how this links to that idea you have to show them you have to bring them along and then the final one when we are going into the the process of refining this work and and all that i'm talking about here you can see that a lot of the process is not about writing the essay it's about getting some building blocks done and then post planning and editing and pushing it together and finding meaningful coherence and here's a transition so it's a long long term process and one more quick note on that people often think that you start an essay and you finish it and, and that's just not it it's just it's a cyclical process it goes round and round and round and round and sometimes you make it better and then the next time you add a bit more and then you add a bit more and then you have to unpick it and you've made it worse so now you've got to edit it again that's what writing an essay is more like especially for me anyway maybe you're a genius and you don't have to work like that but when you are accepting that that's the way in which essays work you'll often find that there's problematic bits sentences that you read and you're like oh, that doesn't that doesn't make sense or that shouldn't be there i was talking about this here one of the phrases i always use with, with, with my students is if in doubt try and take it out can you remove the sentence that's problematic and does the essay still work or even better is it better <laughs> how by removing it have you just got rid of the problem oftentimes when i get reviews back on academic papers someone f f a reviewer flags a statement and I just wonder, can I just get rid of it? It's the path of least resistance. And it's sometimes a little bit lazy and you have to avoid that. If you're doing it because you're being lazy and you're not tackling the problem, well, that's an issue. But oftentimes it's because we say too much, we think too much, we overcomplicate the argument and sometimes just removing it might well be the best thing to do. Okay, hope that's useful. Four more points there to think through. Um, any questions, send me an email, drop me a note. Let's have a discussion about academic writing.